Pauline Swift for Our World Media Magazine, speaking with Norman Dr. Sanders, um, who is the CEO and president of the Armory Sports Foundation here in New York City. Um, can you tell me, you are the founder of the Armory Foundation, and what inspired you and motivated you to start this foundation? Well, <coughs> what the what inspired me with, it came from a number of directions. Uh, one, my own experience. You know, when I was young, I came to the Armory, you know, uh, when I was in, uh, 13, 12 years old, as a freshman in high school, uh, a long time ago, you know, 19, uh, 1956. Uh, but it did a lot for me, you know, and I, I uh, ran here. I was uh, part of it in a way. Our, all our schools came here from all New York City. And uh, I, I got the experience, you know, being with others, uh, a very diverse uh, a group of people. Kind of was really New York City, and uh, I was lucky enough from high school to get a, a track scholarship to college, and uh, so you know that really helped me, uh, and uh, it, it, it set the stage for me being able, uh, you know, later in life to go on to medical school, and to you know, and to, to go into medicine. Uh, but my foundation in a lot of ways was here, you know, was my coach, you know, who believed in me mm -hmm. and uh, my fellow students and uh, fellow competitors. Uh, now the other, that was my personal experience, but uh, when the Armory uh, fell on bad times, you know, in the, uh, uh, the 1980s when it was a homeless shelter and uh, little by little uh, the shelter got bigger and they couldn't have track here and they had to leave. How did you feel when you saw that transition at that moment? Well, I tell you, I, I wasn't quite involved with it. I was still, I was practicing medicine, and uh, I knew about it, but I didn't, I didn't come here during the early uh, 80s to see it. Uh, but what happened was somebody came to me uh, about 1989, 1990, and said, you know, we have to leave. We had to leave the Armory. We couldn't stay. Uh, it got you got two, you know, out of out of hand. You know, it was they had close to two thousand men sleeping here. Uh, they had no place to run. Uh, there was, uh, you know, crime and lots of trouble. And uh, also, some of the the clients who were here got uh, ended up getting tuberculosis, and you know, so it, it frightened away a lot of people. So they decided to leave. So all the running here stopped. Uh, and then in nineteen, approximately nineteen ninety, someone came and said, "Is there any?" you know anybody that can help us, you know, to get back in the armory. And it seemed like an impossible, you know, task at the time, but I, I, I decided, well, maybe I'll try, you know, so I, I put together a group of people, uh, formed a nonprofit organization, and uh, came here many, many times to look at it. It was, wasn't easy, and then took up a, a real campaign, you know, in the newspapers and in the streets, uh, everywhere, to uh, get the city to uh, realize that the, how valuable this was for all the kids, and that we should somehow try to, you know, bring back the track. And uh, it took a long time. It took three years, uh, back and forth and up and down. Uh, but finally, Mayor Dinkins uh, decided that he would give us a chance. So he handed me the key and said, "Look, uh, I'll give you one year. See what you can do." So we took the key and our group. And uh, when we started, we had nothing. You know. What was the first thing you did? When you got that key, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I yeah, I'll tell you a story. It was uh, they gave me the key downtown. They said come downtown to uh, Lower Manhattan, down to, to Beaver Street, all those places, Department of Homeless Services. And they said we're moving out because Mayor Dickens had actually lost the election to Giuliani, so he was leaving, and you know, the others were coming. Everybody was in boxes, and you know. So they said, look, here's the key. And uh, good luck. <laughs> so I, I, I left the building there. I started walking down the street. I remember it was raining and it was a quiet. I said, now what am I going to do? So, <laughs> that, you know, be careful you get what you wish for. You know, I said, now what am I going to do? I said, we don't have any money. We have nothing. How are we going to do this? Now, we had no money. I had no real You were scared? Were you scared? I wasn't really scared because I figured we'd figure a way. I figured, you know why? Because I knew how good the sport was, and I knew how how important it was to the schools and to the kids. I knew how that it was there. I knew it was there. It was just to get it going again. So the first thing I did 
was I went to uh, a friend of mine, Gary Murky, at stores in Manhattan, and I said, Gary, you got to go to a, a shoe company, one of the sports companies, and get them to give us enough money so that I can go to the Mondo track and put down a down payment on a new track because I had no, there's no track up there. I said, we got to... We got to improve the building because we can't just leave it, you know, wood, you know, an old wooden floor. And that's how it was before. I said we got to put a track down. So, around and around, and we did. We found somebody, and uh, they made some kind of financial thing, and uh, we got a, a down payment of seventy-five thousand dollars. And but the track was two hundred thousand dollars. But I said, look. God will provide the rest. So <laughs> he started with, with the 75, and we put the track down. Well, lo and behold, the people started to come, you know, and I mean, everything, the windows were broken, there was no lights, I mean, the place was a mess. But we had the track. So mm -hmm. the first year, uh, we had about 30 or 40 track meets, and uh, we started to, to build. When we started, to, the school started to come. I set up a kind of a financial program where if you came you had to rent it a little bit and you know or pay at the door a little little bit just to, and then we started getting uh, sponsorships you know from uh, we got the, uh, the running companies and New Balance and the New York Road Runners and then we started getting a little help from the hospital across the street and this one and that one and you know each year after that we tried to make it better make it better make it better and uh, you know, now we're 21 years, you know, into this thing. But, but this passion came from when you was running here. It was came from my his my when I was a kid, kid. you know, when I was young. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's where it came from. And you know, uh, my coach coached at my school. I went to Ford and Prep up in the Bronx, and he coached here for 40 years. He never was late one day ever. He 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 was there over here night and day. We had 180 boys on the track team, 180, and he was so devoted to the whole thing that. I took his example, you know, of, of, you know, he was, you know, he just would never give up, you know, so I, I, I took that example of, uh, with this. And then little by little, it started to come. We had lots of help from this one, that one, the public school league, the Catholic school league, the, this one, the, that one, the PAL, the, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the MAC, uh, the Metropolitan Athletics Congress, the USA Track and Field, I mean, you know. and. Uh, so it just started to, to come little by little together, and we built a season, and then the next year, bigger season, and a bigger and a bigger, and now we're up to 105 track meets, you know, during the year. And, uh, and then yeah, we figured how to pay for the track meets, because the, the, the meets don't pay for themselves. So I had to get uh, more sponsorships, so I got New Balance, you know, Sporting Goods, mm -hmm. Roadrunner's bigger. And then we have events in between, so we'll do expos and graduations and receptions and all kinds of things, even a fashion show we had once, uh, and we rent it for that, and we use that money to, you know, to, to put back into to put back the in for the track and, and for the college prep program. That's a very important thing for us. Uh, that's a, for two, 200 students who are on track, who want to go to college, and we help them. You know, we have a whole uh, classroom, and we have the Khan Academy, and we have uh, counselors and writers, and you know, everyone helps. And uh, that's very important to us. That's, uh, you know, that's uh, one of our missions here, is that you don't just run, you go somewhere, you know, you, you go. I see, step. Dr. Sanders, that I guess your middle name is Perseverance. Perseverance, that could be, that could be, that could be the case. Well, I did get some Perseverance, one from my mother, who's very, you know, she's a, she's a person, my mother's 93 now, believe it or not. Ooh. Thank and God. Um, my father died a long, long time ago. But I also got the perseverance for, by going to medical school. Medical school really teaches you to, you know, to, to, if you go to medical school and then you train in the hospital, you're up all night for two days in a row with no sleep. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you get tough, you know, and that kind of, you know, that, see, the thing is, being a doctor in the hospital, there's nobody to come and call to help you. You're it. <laughs> There's nobody else. You know, they call on you. You got to solve the problem. Huh. And that experience of you know training to be a doctor and be a doctor really helped. I think with this, in a sense. And there's a lot of disappointments too. A lot of very young people say no. We can't do it. Slam the door in your face. Say, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. You know, just as much as yes. So you got to you know close the door. Go to the next door. That's all. You know, keep going. But uh, it. it when you sit back and you and you look at the armory today, 
what do you feel for the next 25 years? What do you, what do you, what is your insight? Well, that's a good, 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 that's a good thing to ask. We've gotten so far, you know, we have it, we, we, we must maintain what we have in a, in a, a good state so that it's ready to have all these meets and competitions for the kids. Because that's why we're here. We're not here to, you know, have fashion shows and all that. You know, that's nice, but, but we want to know that during the indoor track season, we have track meets for like last night. Oh, you know, so the kids come, they got a track. They have a, a place to train. They train after school. Uh, the, the facility is good, clean, neat, safe, all of that. We got to have security, got to make it. And the kids are good, believe me, we don't have, we don't have any trouble here with the kids. It's, it's amazing. It's actually amazing. Uh, but we, we've got to do that. That's our mission. Now, if we keep doing the same thing for the next 20 years, that's pretty good. You know, because don't forget, they're all new kids, right? They go to high school, you know, freshmen, and they graduate, and another group comes. So it's, mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it, is that it's an experience for everybody. We have to lift the sport up. We've got to get the sport of track higher because... It's a great sport. We've got great professionals, great college, great high school. We don't have enough support for it. It's not in the paper. It's not on TV. We got to work that. We got to work that. We got to get support for that. That's what we have to do. We need attention. My wife doesn't know anything much about track. She every now and then comes down. She says, "I've never seen a happier, healthier bunch of kids in my whole life." You know? Yeah. I mean, these even the college students. They're, they're good looking and good shape. And, well, you, well, you know, you can't be, you know, well, what would say not to like, but the world doesn't know about it, you know, and it's very important, I think, that we got to get the opportunity out also for more students, particularly in high school, to be part of it, to be, join the track team, do this, it's a good thing to do, you know, you can do it, there's a place for everybody on the track team, that's the other thing, yeah, yeah. basketball, you got to be good at basketball, soccer, you got to be playing for 100 years, you know, everything is, you know, like this, track, Everybody can do it, you know. Uh, you go, you just try your best. You go around, you can join a team. So we want to keep that going. Uh, we are developing here more and more our social media uh, development, you know, with, which is uh, how, do we, how do we interact with all the students that come here? How do they interact with each other? Uh, how does that promote what we're doing here? So, you know, we have hired people who are uh, computer engineers, uh, Justin Gaiman, who's a writer for the for the uh, Army Track, is the head of the, the website. Uh, you know, I realize that we need younger people. You know, I mean, my generation doesn't know anything about this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need, and I leave them alone. I have them upstairs. There's a group up there. They have their own room. Boom, they sit and think. And, you know, they're working. So we have to join all the the modern uh, techniques of communication. Uh, to, to get out our message <clears throat> and through that to get support sponsorship you know from that so attention here attention there and uh, we're working on all this do you thing. also offer counseling I'm, I'm a social worker certainly yeah. and um, with activities yeah uh, it's very good for to get people yeah. involved in activities keeps sure, the, sure. the youth off the street it keeps them mentally engaged oh, oh, absolutely. Uh, but what happens to the the ones that like uh, falling through the cracks yeah. uh, do you have some type of net system you know to catch it's, them? it's 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 an area that we uh, at one time got very involved in you know okay. we, we had a truancy program here we had all kinds of things our requirement to be part of this, you know, the college, all the other things. The requirement is you're on the track team. You've got to be on the track team. Uh, and the reason for that is, one, it's a good sport, but number two, it's a beginning. And also commitment. You're committed, you got your bag, you come, you do your workout, you got a coach, you take care of yourself, you meet other people, you come together, you got to keep your grades, you know, at least good enough so you can compete. So that's a requirement. Now, <clears throat> students who have worse issues, you know, who are trying to struggle with mm -hmm. life and everything along those lines. If they are on the track team and they come here and they go to the college prep, we, we do tend to, you know, help in counseling. But we don't want to get too much into that because you can get consumed with one person and then you leave ten out, you know. So you got to stay with those who, who are getting in the door, do their work, you know, stick with it. 
Uh, we used to have more kids in the program. How many kids are in the program Two, now? 200 in the college uh, prep program. But we, we had almost 300 once. But we, the other 100 had all kinds of problems. But they weren't showing up. They'd come. Sometimes they were disruptive in the class. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and they have their you know, reasons for all of this. You know, but we can't solve them with our group. So we, the, the idea is we will help. Now, we have, we have some students who live in shelters, live in the shelter. That's it. That's what they live. They come here to the program. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they have a tough life, a lot of them. Uh, but they're in there. They go to college. You, you, it's amazing. They got to the, give everybody a computer. Sometimes they're in a situation where they can't even get to their work until midnight because it's, you know, everything is going chaotic. on around them. Chaotic. So, yeah, we work with them. You know, I mean, but we, we, we want to help everyone. You know, it's everybody. a wonderful program. Yeah, it's it's a program, but we got to have a standard for it too. It's got to be saying you got to do it. See, if you go on that Khan Academy, we know when you're on that it's recorded. Everything's recorded. So if you don't do it, it doesn't. There's no activity. If you do do it, we have so many minutes a week, hours a week. You know, and and, and now if a student never does it, well, you know, it, it, it's it's not helping. You know, it, it, uh, so. Uh, so we, we're trying to keep a standard, but we do realize that there's, you know, students come with a lot of issues, you know, that are very difficult. We, we've, uh, we've seen kids who, uh, you know, come from, you know, abusive situations or whatever, and uh, we try to help them out, you know, uh, and we do help them out. We have uh, one, one student here who lived in a shelter, and then she went to college, and then both parents, you know, and so she had to take over for her nine-year-old brother, who was, has to live with her. She had no place to live, so we got her an apartment, you know, with, with, with her brother. <laughs> with her brother. <laughs> then we went down to Hunter. We said, you got to give her a dormitory. So we, it's a whole story. But she is going to be successful. She's determined, and she's good, she's smart, and she's going to be good, you know. So we're, you know, we, 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 we stick with them. We try not to get into social work up front, though. Okay. You know, see, that's the thing. Because uh, it's sports. It's, it's sports. Yes. Do the sports, you know. Do the sports. And, and the, the other thing we encourage kids, believe it or not, is put behind you all the troubles the best you can, mm -hmm. you know, and just jump in here and just keep going. Because if we all focus on all the troubles in life, we never get anywhere, you know. So try to, try to, you know, say, come here and boom, the door's open, you know. And, Here's, here's the future. What's your word of the day to give to young people? Uh, I, I, I think, you know, try hard, you know, try, try hard, you know. Uh, there's, there's no, uh, there's nothing wrong with trying hard and failing, you know, but try. And if, it, if you don't make it, you'll make it the next time, you know. If you don't set the bar up, my mother always said, set the bar up higher. Maybe you don't get up here, you come in the middle, but wherever, you know, try. Keep trying. Reach. Reach for it. And the other is this, is, is, is try to work with the people around you that want to help you. Because there is help, you know. No one's alone. President Obama said that, you know. He said, look, Nobody ever made this on their own. All these rich guys saying, I did it. Baloney, you know, everybody got help. Everybody gets help. You know, I got help when I was growing up. Uncles, aunts, uh, people around the corner, a social group. Uh, you know, everybody tries to look out and see where those people are around you, in your community, your church, you know, all the different, the, the strong points of your life. Use those uh, to help you. You know, these are, this is uh, the focus of it all, your foundation, you know. And, uh, and that's and that's important. We, we, no one's alone. We're not. You know, we come into people say, "Oh, Dr. Sander did this." Oh, you know, we're two thousand other people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Dr. Sander. You know, but uh, and that's it. You get. You know, you bring out the best in other people. You get help. Uh, don't give up. Just never give up. Just never, never give up. That's all. You know, well, just, I'm yeah. going to leave this interview on that positive note. Yeah. Not to give up. That's it. That's it. That's the truth. Because I believe in yeah. it. Yeah, well, I believe I in see it. I, I can see it. So there you go. You don't give up on this either. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. you.